Hello and welcome, everybody. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen here on Revolution Radio. And I believe I have an interesting show lined up for you this evening. I'm going to try to make it through two short texts, which I believe I'll be able to cover them in, you know, in each of the different halves of the show. The first is the book of the Order of the Ancients, uh, which, because nobody can find it, and it seems I'm one of the very few people that has even a copy of it, I'm going to share it with you so that it will be disseminated and out in the public domain, and I'm going to try to do that in its fullness. Um, and then I'm going to share another very interesting text, which not a lot of people have heard, of, heard about either. It is a book called For Enoch, which is a, another text which you cannot find a lot of information on. And with regard to if these books are inspired or not, I make no judgments one way or the other about that. Uh, I am simply sharing and reading and giving to you what I have so that this material doesn't disappear. Whether, you know, um, again, as to the origins and to where they've come from, I, I really can't answer um, because those websites are no longer available and and so I, I just I have a um, a compulsion to whenever I find an interesting text or a manuscript which is uh, little known about, uh, I try to grab it, um, screenshot or copy and paste uh, to my own file so that I can have a copy of it. And I'm really glad that I started that as habit because. So much of what I have um, snagged off the internet over the years uh, has disappeared and is no longer available. And so um, I'm going to put it out there in the public domain. But anyways, the first one, I'm going to share a passage from the writings of Abraham, which speak interestingly about what we will be talking about in this other text. And in chapter 1, verse 3, it says, And finding great happiness and peace and rest therein, I sought for the blessings of the fathers, and I received, under the direction of Noah and Shem, those instructions whereby I might enter into the order of the ancients. And I became a rightful heir and high priest, holding the right belonging to the fathers. For I was ushered in to the church of the firstborn and tasted of the fruits of heavenly life. Really <clears throat> quick comment as well. In some of the other extra biblical texts, which I've read through, and there has also been mention of this order of the ancients or the church of the firstborn in association to Enoch and the, the communal aspects similar to what the Essenes were living in Qumran is the kind of um, interactions that the community of believers have with one another and so I think that's an interesting aspect of the text that I'm going to be bringing forth. But because I've got so much to cover, we're going to go ahead and get into it. And I'm going to try to make it through this. And also, um, I am going to put this book together with another couple of manuscripts which are difficult to find and release them as the book of the order of the ancients 
And I'll do that probably within a month for those that are interested in reading it. And uh, I do give a shout out to Stig, who is from Finland, I believe, or Denmark. Um, but he's one of the latest to ask me to release this book so the book of the order of the ancients of elijah the prophet the record of elijah the tishbit which he wrote for his disciple elisha whom he called from his field in abamola unto the holy order of god behold i elijah write this record with mine own hand and no man shall see it until I have ascended into heaven. Then shall mine authority and the keys of my priesthood, which is the priesthood of the fathers, pass to my son Elisha by right of lineage and obedience. This priesthood came down to me from the fathers by lineage, for I am a descendant of Joshua, the son of Nun, who was descended from Ephraim, the son of Joseph, through whom the rights of the firstborn descended in Israel. These rights I received when I was but a lad from my father before he was martyred for the testimony of Jehovah. And according to the word of the Lord, I have appointed Elisha, who is mine adopted son, to be my successor in bearing off this work. Nevertheless, not all of my rights shall rest upon him, for the Lord hath said, Behold, my servant Elijah shall not die, but shall bear with him the keys of his ministry unto the heavenly city, unto the last days when I shall send him unto one of his seed, whom I shall raise up to bear the fullness of this ministry again among the sons of men. Uh, real quick commentary. If you do not know about how Elijah and Enoch, because they never succumb to death during lifetime, that they are the two witnesses of Revelation 11. You can look up my study on that uh, on our YouTube channels, Endeavor Freedom and Zen Garcia. Just search for Revelation 11, two witnesses, and under Endeavor Freedom, and it'll come up for you. But he shall leave with Elisha those keys necessary to continue his work in organizing the schools of the prophets and the order of Enoch, that the sons of the prophets may continue to live after the holy order of God. Therefore, my son Elisha, I leave for thee this book of the order by which thou mayest govern the order of Enoch, for I have organized and governed this order according to to the revelations of the Lord to me and under the direction of his Holy Spirit, I give thee these instructions. Everyone who desireth to enter the order of Enoch must be one who loveth the Lord his God with all his heart, might, mind, and strength, and one who loveth his fellow man as himself according to the word of the Lord through Moses. He must covenant to live the law of consecration and to hold all things common with his brethren, according to the pattern set by our first parents. For when they came forth from the garden, they divided not up the land, but held it in common until their posterity through wickedness began to lay claim to it for themselves. Behold, this private ownership of the property came to pass through the teachings of that evil combination which was organized by Cain, that men might get gain for themselves, because the love of God and man is not in them. He who entereth the order must be one who is dedicated to seeing the face of God and receiving from him the promise of eternal lives. He must keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord his God to do what is good and upright in the sight of God according to that 
which he commanded through Moses, the lawgiver, and through his servants, the prophets. He who seeketh to enter the holy order of God must be one who loveth that which the Lord loveth, and hateth that which the Lord hateth. He must keep all the evil far from him, and love to do good that his works may bear testimony of his righteousness before God and man. He must be governed by the principle of truth, righteousness, and justice in all he doeth while in this tabernacle of clay. Having repented of his inclination to follow after the dictates of the flesh, no longer doing evil according to the selfishness and jealousy and contentious spirit which dwelleth in the natural man, Every member of the order must be dedicated to bringing into a bond of mutual love all those who are striving to live after the holy order of God. To live after the order of the ancients means that they must live in the community of God's elect, holding all things common and loving one another as themselves. Yea, they must unite in one heart and one mind, for only thus can Zion be built up in its perfect order, and the name of our God be glorified. Those entering the holy order must have shown by their works their desires to live according to all that God has revealed, to keep all his commandments, to perfect their lives according to God's holy order, that they may be sanctified by the blood of the covenant, unto the renewal of their spirits and their bodies. They must love all the children of light, each according to his position in the house of God. For those who live the highest law are most able to be loved and so forth, even unto the lowest law of God. They must hate the works of darkness and avoid intercourse with the sons of Belial. Each according to the measure of his guilt, for God will bring up every work into judgment, and those who associate with the wicked will be condemned with them. He who loveth the truth and truly desireth to live after the order of heaven must declare his willingness to be united to the congregation of the Lord's elect and must consecrate by covenant all of his mind, all of his strength, and all of his wealth to the community of God so that his mind may be purified by the truth of the Lord's precepts, his strength controlled by the Lord's perfect ways, and his wealth disposed of in accordance with the law, with the Lord's just design. He must order his life according to the life pattern which the Lord hath given observing the hours of worship, the Sabbaths, and the holy days, to do them, neither omitting the feast nor neglecting the fasts of the Lord. He must be one whose heart is knit unto the ordinances of God's law, who will strive diligently to preserve them in purity, neither breaking the laws, changing the ordinances, nor neglecting the everlasting covenants of our God. Another quick comment here. It's my opinion that the Sabbath and the feast days as they are mandated in Leviticus 23, that the only way we can determine Sabbath and the correct feast days according to God's calendar, in my opinion, is to align this information with the clockwork mechanism of the creation. And so I'll explain more about that next week. But it has everything to do with the Enochian calendar that we established and released, and which I will be releasing another very soon which goes from March to February and brings the seasons in according to the linear progression 
of them as maintained in observance by God's true calendar. The new year begins in March, March and not in January, just so everyone knows. All right, continue. When such a man cometh forward to present himself as a candidate for admission into the order, he should be examined carefully by the elders of the community, and having been proven worthy, he must enter into a covenant in the presence of God, the holy angels, and his brethren of the order by entering into the waters of immersion that he will do according to all that God hath commanded, and not turn away from the service of the Lord through fear of wicked men or evil spirits, nor through discouragement because of the trials which Belial shall send against him. For the Lord God of our fathers hath appointed that all who seek to live after his holy order shall be tried and purified until their gold is pure and their dross consumed. When a man hath entered into this covenant in the waters of immersion, the elders of the community are to lay their hands upon his head and bless him with the Holy Spirit of God. I also want to address again really quickly baptism that I do find all throughout the scriptures that especially those that become true disciples unto Christ and born again in him, they dedicating their lives to the kingdom, that it is, according to the scripture, important to be baptized in a manner that shows um, that, that change in one's life and disposition, and that um, we should be immersed in living water running water in a creek or a river and um and that we should be immersed fully according to what i've read and what i've studied in many different texts and it doesn't have to be by some pastor or preacher or minister or anyone with authority other than someone having relationship with the godhead all right continuing at the end of each year, every member of the community is to be interviewed from first to last, that the spiritual standing of each in the community may be determined. This is needful so long as Belial continues to hold sway as the god of this world. The object of this interview is that every man in Israel may be made aware of his status in the community of God's elect, that he may measure himself against the perfect eternal society of heaven. If any man finds that he is being governed by a law which is beyond his desires, then let him be placed among those who live after his own heart. If any man will qualify himself to live a law higher than he is living, let the opportunity be given him to live that law. Thus, no man in Israel need be abased below his ability to qualify nor exalted above his desires to live after the heavenly pattern. Thus all members of the community will stand each in his proper place according to a true evaluation of his standing before God. Let those who judge in these matters judge according to correct principle in profound humility being full of charity and equity toward their brethren and sisters, that the society of heaven may flourish among you, being sanctified by love and unity in the Lord our God. Anyone who refuses to live after the pattern of God's holy order, the perfect society of heaven, but persists in walking after stubbornness of his own heart and the vain traditions of his fathers, shall not be admitted into the community of God's elect. For inasmuch as he has rebelled against the discipline required of those who are called to set their lives in order according to the precepts of the heavenly law, 
he cannot be counted among the saints of the Most High. The spiritual, mental, physical, and material resources of such a man are of no, are of no value to the community of God's elect. Therefore, he shall not be permitted to enter into the order of Enoch to live after the pattern of heaven. If he were honest in acknowledging his weakness before God, then would the Lord make his weakness to become strength unto him. But inasmuch as his heart remaineth stubborn, and he repenteth not, he shall remain in his sins. Such a one looketh upon the light of God's truth, but seeth only darkness. He can never be sanctified, because the light is not in him, that he should be born again, a new creature in the Lord. Although he should offer numerous sacrifices in the similitude of the Lamb of God, and be immersed in water any number of times, and be washed and anointed after the order of the Messiah, yet he can never be cleansed from his sins except through contrition and repentance, wherein he rejecteth his former works and walketh in the path which our fathers walked, which is the holy order of God. Unclean, unclean he remaineth, so long as he will not be governed by the laws of God, neither submit himself to the ordinances, he shall never enter into communion with the heavenly hosts. It is only when the spirit of man hath been awakened to the light of God's truth that he can begin to direct his life according to those holy principles by which he can ascend into the presence of God and make his calling and election sure. Only through obedience to those laws and that holy order which have been handed down from our fathers who entered into the presence of the Lord and held communion with the general assembly and church of the firstborn, can a man sanctify his life to commune with the Father, with the fathers who have gone on before? Thus, can the blessings and rites and the priesthood of the fathers descend upon their heads and they shall dwell in the courts of the sanctified in time and eternity. For only through obedience to the laws and the ordinances of God, walking faithfully after his holy order, and enduring unto the end, therein can a man be redeemed from the fall and gain a remission of all his sins, so that his mind can be open to gaze upon the true light of life. It is through obedience to the laws and the ordinances of the Lord that a man receiveth the Holy Ghost, which will lead him unto true and complete union with God and all the holy men, as his iniquities are lifted from him and his mind is expanded to receive God's truth, that he may walk therein as one of the children of light. For the atonement of the Lamb of God cometh upon all those who are upright and humble and submissive to all the ordinances of God, that their sins should be washed away in the waters of immersion and they be sanctified through the blood of the covenant and the immersion in fire and in the Holy Ghost. Thus are they purified from all stain, that they should be pure and holy without spot. 
Only such a one can perfectly direct his steps to walk blamelessly through all the vicissitudes of life, never deviating from the ways of God, but keeping all the commandments without turning either to the right or to the left, and without overstepping any of the bounds imposed by the word of God, then indeed is he perfectly acceptable before God and a pleasure unto our Lord. Then will his joy increase and he will enter by covenant in the to the community of the faithful to dwell with the fathers who have inherited their thrones forever and ever. Those who enter into covenant to hold all things common according to the order of Enoch and faithfully adhere to the order of the ancients should be instructed that their minds may be open to the vision of eternity and how the order of heaven can be established and perpetuated here on the earth. He who is called to instruct the children of light in these matters must understand and teach the disciples the true nature of man, the different influences which form his character, the meaning of his history, and the reason that God at one time blesseth him bounteously, and at another time afflicteth him dreadfully. This is the hidden knowledge, the application of which redeemeth man from his natural state and ushereth him into the holy order of God, where he can be prepared to enter into the presence of God himself and partake of the fruits of eternal lives. The Lord is a God of knowledge. By his word was everything made, which was made, and he governeth all things according to his infinite foreknowledge. Even before he created the heavens and the earth, he counseled with the hosts of heaven and planned a plan wherein the spirit of every man should have his appointed role. For the spirit of every man appeared before the Lord of Spirits in the beginning and received a place appointed in the family of heaven and earth. When a man filleth his appointed role, it is according to the glorious design of the Lord of Spirits. And thus, as each one functions according to the divine plan, the work of God is pushed towards its consummation. The designs of God cannot be frustrated. In his hand lieth the government of all things, and he sustaineth all the children of men in their needs. Wherefore it becometh all men to worship the Lord God of Israel and be obedient to the divine plan which he hath ordained in their behalf. Some deeply profound material right there. And again, you know, just further commentary on pre-existence and uh, of how the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit knew us even before the foundations of the world, that in spiritual, angelic, and mortal form, they knew us even before the war in heaven, before the destruction of the earth, before the casting down of Satan, the adversary, and the one-third of the angels of the Most High, which joined him on rebellion on the second day. And then even before the plan, uh, the fall of Adam and Eve, and the creation of the pre all of that, that the Most High had to accommodate the fall of the rebel angels, their insurrection, and create the second world age, and the plan of the great contest, the enmity, between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, as we see it playing out even now.
Now the God of the spirits of all men created man to rule the world and set before him the ways of life and death, truth and falsehood. Thus was man made free, even from the beginning, to choose for himself the good or the evil, until the final judgment, when the works of every man shall be made manifest, and each shall receive a just reward according to his works, requisite with the mercy of our God. The origin of truth lieth in the fountain of light, the Holy One of Israel, while the origin of falsehood or evil lieth in the wellspring of darkness. All who practice righteousness are under the dominance of the Prince of Lights, and walk in the path of light, while those who practice evil are under the domination of the angel of darkness, and walk in the path of darkness. Yea, the angel of darkness is the devil, that evil spirit who lieth in wait to entrap the souls of men, and drag them down to misery and woe. He lieth in wait at any opportunity, to lead the unwary soul into sin and error, so that through his evil influence, even the children of light are led to commit those things which are grievous in the eyes of God. When men of their own free will choose to follow the influence of this enemy of all righteousness, they fall from the grace of the God of heaven and must repent of their iniquities, that the Lord can visit them in his mercy and redeem them from their sins, that they may know to sing the song of redeeming love. All the afflictions which befall the children of men, all their trials, all their sorrows, result from the acts of this prince of evil. He and all his hosts are dedicated to causing the children of light to fall from grace and become enmeshed in their snares. Nevertheless, the God of Israel with all his holy angels is always nearby to assist the sons of light and save all those who will call upon his name from the power of the evil ones. The Lord God hath given unto man his agency to choose the good or the evil. The Lord loveth righteousness and will forever and ever, and is always pleased with those who walk in the paths of righteousness. But he hateth the evil, and those who walk in the paths of evil will be cast out of the presence of the Lord at the last day, for the Lord cannot look upon evil with any degree of acceptance nor can those who love evil dwell in his presence. And so we have in this verse, again, a reference to the harvest as being on the last day, that the judgment, the gathering of the tares for burning and the elect, the wheat for preservation, that all occurs on the last day when the wrath of God is poured out on the wicked and those not written to the books of life, that the, um, the judgment against all, where every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, it all occurs on the great and the terrible day of the Lord, which is the last day. These are the fruits of the Spirit of God, enlightenment whereby a man can perceive the ways of God, to walk therein, discernment to know the good from the evil, reverence from the name of deity, and consciousness of the approaching judgments of God, humility, patience, abundant charity, love of righteousness, vision, wisdom, trust, faith, confidence in the power of the Almighty God, knowledge, self-mastery, sanctity, pure thoughts, 
abounding love for all who follow the truth, purity, modesty, and the ability to hide within oneself the secrets of God which one has received. All these things come unto men in this world through communion with the Spirit of Truth. All those who walk in that path which is set before them by the Spirit of Truth shall receive health in their navel and marrow to their bones and shall find wisdom and hidden treasures of knowledge. These shall inherit eternal lives and even the continuation of the seeds forever and ever, world without end. Eternal shall be their blessings, and everlasting their joy in the realms of glory, for they shall be crowned with light and robed in glory, and shall dwell in everlasting burnings in the presence of our God. With the wicked, it is not so, for the fruits of wickedness are greed, malice, falsehood, pride, presumption, deception, guile, insolence, unrighteous anger, folly, arrogance, lewdness, unchastity, blasphemies, selfishness, blindness of the eyes, and defiance, deafness of the ears, stiffness of the neck, and hardness of the heart. Such men walk entirely in the ways of darkness, and all their works are evil and abominable in the eyes of God. Those who walk in the paths of evil shall receive a multitude of afflictions at the hands of the holy angels. These are the sons of perdition, who are subject to the wrath of God throughout all eternity. Eternal horror is their end, and perpetual reproach, even the disgrace of final annihilation in the fire, for they shall dwell in outer darkness until their end, which is extinction, without remnant or survival, and after this their lot. No man knoweth, nor is it revealed to any man, save those who are made partakers thereof which that um verse in my opinion goes along with the theme uh, again in my opinion that lucifer when he became satan the adversary and the other rebel angels which joined him in attempting to overthrow yeshua uh, christ as the um the leader of the angelic hierarchy, that when they were judged, exiled, and cast down out of the heavenly heights, that judgment was brought upon them in such manner that they were under the authority of death, just like Adam and Eve when they fell and were banished and cast out. And so they were the first... Um, to be placed under that authority, but it wasn't in single lifetime like those of us that incarnate into flesh form in human mortal form, but that they would be able to possess and uh, tr transfer through body and lifetime to become the different rulers, which is why in Isaiah, Satan is referenced as um, as the son of Tyrus and the prince of Tyrus and the king of Tyrus and you know and also he Pharaoh um, Satan was called uh, you know said to be possessed of Pharaoh and um, and so these kind of things in my opinion play into the fact that the bloodlines, the Illuminati, the elites, the New World Order elites, that they give themselves openly up to such possession and that these rebel angels work and dominate in this realm uh, through such ritual. 
And this is also spoken about in the Emerald Tablets of Thoth as um, when they took over the councils of the mighty and to, that they rule over man. Continuing. Thus, O Elisha, are the ways placed before every man that he may choose the good or the evil. Thus is man free to choose for himself, for the Lord will force no man to choose the right, and the devil cannot force him to choose evil. Between good and evil there is an eternal enmity. They cannot exist together in peace. But the Lord God hath appointed a time or judgment when he shall destroy evil forever. Then will truth emerge triumphant and shall cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. Then shall the sanctified those who have been refined and purified from all evil and all the effects of wickedness through the immersion of fire and of the Holy Spirit reign with the Lord upon the sanctified earth. These have been washed clean in the waters of immersion and receive of the Holy Spirit unto the cleansing of their souls from all the abominations and filth of wickedness that having been made pure and holy, they might understand the hidden mysteries of the kingdom of God, those secrets re which remain among the sons of light, being endowed with the vision of the heavenly order. These hath God chosen to be joint heirs in his eternal covenant that they should inherit his glory. Then will the earth be redeemed, death and hell shall be no more, and men shall dwell in the presence of God, those who have been sanctified forever and ever, worlds without end. Now, my son, Elisha, having explained the influences which lead men to do good or evil, I shall give unto thee the rules of the order which all the members of the community of God's elect are bound to obey. All such as shall have declared their desire to run away from all evil and walk in obedience to every word of God according to the commandments which he hath given shall observe these rules. They are to keep apart from the company of the froward, having not intercourse with the inhabitants of the world, except such as is required in the exercise of their stewardships and the preaching to them of the gospel of repentance. They are to be one with their brethren in the community of God's elect, holding all their goods common according to the holy order of God and holding one faith and one doctrine. They are to abide by the decisions of the presidency of the order and the family council in all matters and be subject to the word of God as it is delivered throughout his prophets, the patriarchs, in all matters doctrinal, economic, and judicial. They are to be united in all their efforts and always practice veracity, humility, righteousness, justice, charity, and decency with no one walking in the stubbornness of his own heart or going astray according to the ideas of his fallible human mind. They are to unite their efforts in overcoming their carnal natures, that the flesh may be subjected to the spirit, putting off the carnal man, becoming spiritual in their natures. They are to establish truth in Israel, that falsehood should be banished from among them forever. They are to unite with an everlasting covenant, forming a bond of union which can never be broken. They are to freely extend forgiveness 
to all who have enlisted in the cause of holiness and truth. Thus shall they become united as one man before the Lord our God, that they may be found acceptable in his sight. Abo obedience to these rules can only be maintained through cultivation of the Holy Spirit, which is received in the ordinances of God's house. Everyone who seeketh admittance to the community of the order must first be approved by the presidency of the order. He must then enter into a covenant of God in the presence of his brethren of the order, binding himself by a solemn oath to consecrate all of his mind, all of his strength, and all of his wealth to the community of God's elect. He who maketh this covenant is to keep himself apart from those who have not received the ordinances of God's house, except when acting in the strength of his priesthood in the service of our God. Those who reject the ordinances of God's house cannot perfect their lives that they may be sanctified by the power of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, they remain in their sins and their pride being subject to the judgment of God. For surely he shall come forth in vengeance upon all those who have the covenant revealed unto them, but receive it not until they shall be finally destroyed without remnant if they repent not. No man can be purified except by the power of the Holy Ghost, which was received in the ordinances of God. Only thereby can men become holy if they repent of their evils. For without repentance, the reception of the ordinances is a mockery before God and shall result in a cursing and not a blessing. When a man desireth to enter the covenant and take upon himself the ordinances of God's house, Thereby, allying himself with the congregation of the saints, he is to be interviewed to determine his conduct in life, his relations with his fellow men, and his adherence to correct principle and the true doctrines of heaven. He who is found acceptable shall then enter the order of Enoch after the Aaronic order which where through obedience to the word of God and the instructions of those who preside over him in the priesthood, he may progress from one degree to another until he entereth into the order of the Father, the holiest of all. Moreover, every member of the order is to be interviewed at the end of each year to evaluate his spiritual attitude and the performance of his duties. And thus, by annual and other interviews, the standing of each man in the community may be made evident that the righteous may be promoted by virtue of their increased understanding and the integrity of their conduct, while the forward shall be demoted for their waywardness. When any member of the community hath been offended by another or observeth another in wrongdoing, he is not to come against that erring one with a railing accusation, but is to approach him truthfully, humbly, and humanly. A saint of God must not bear hatred in his heart toward his brother. If the offender will not hear his complaint, then he is to take it with him to of the teachers of reason with him. If the offender will not hear them, then he is to be called before the high priest and his brethren, who are set as judges in Israel. Thus will all disputations be settled in order 
without anger or emotion, that peace and harmony and unity may be preserved in Israel. Furthermore, no man is to bring a charge publicly against his brother except he prove it by witnesses, for in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every charge be established. These rules should govern the affairs of the community. All those who have entered the holy order of God should be obedient to those who have been placed over them in the priesthood in all matters, as especially those relating to the order of Enoch. All the elect are to eat at a common table, assemble at every appointed time to worship the Lord their God, and attend all councils to which they are invited. They are to attend the schools of the priesthood, where they can be instructed in the order of heaven. They are to neither eat nor drink that which hath not been blessed and sanctified. They shall assemble at sunrise, high noon, and sundown to praise the Lord their God and worship before his throne. They shall meet together often to study the word of God and share the word of life. The council of the order is to be conducted according to the laws of God. Every member is to have an equal opportunity to give his opinion in the council. No one, however, is to interrupt while his brother is speaking, not to speak until he is finished. Everyone is to speak in turn as he is called upon. And no one is to speak on any subject which is not the concern of that council. Thus, by reasoning together, will the council determine the will of God, that all things in the order may be done to the glory of the God of Israel. Regarding the teaching of this order, O Elisha, no one is to engage in discussion or disputation with another concerning the law of God, nor is it to be discussed with those who are not sincerely seeking the truth with those however that have chosen the right path everyone is to discuss matters pertaining to the knowledge of god's truth and of his righteous judgments the purpose of such discussions is to guide the minds of the members of the community to give them insight into god's hidden wonders and truths and to bring them to walk blamelessly each with his neighbor in harmony with all that has been revealed to them for this life is a time of preparation for meeting the lord in a time when the elect must be careful not to mingle with the wicked lest they be led to turn aside from the way through the cunning craftiness of the evil ones thus must the elect be careful to live by every word of god say unto those who are seeking the inner vision in these dark days Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let mine elect keep no fellowship with the world, for all their ways are evil before me. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, for a second hour. I'm your host, Zen Garcia, and this is um, Momentary Zen here on Revolution Radio. I'm going to try to make it through this text quickly and then share with you um, some portion of Enoch 4. Probably won't be able to cover it in its entirety, but I think you'll be blown away by it as well. So continuing. Say unto those who are seeking the inner vision in these dark days, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let mine elect keep no fellowship with the world, for all their ways are evil before me. Leave them to pursue their wealth and profit, for they are slaves to their desires. 
Be ye zealous to carry out every covenant and commandment which ye have received in the ordinances of mine house, or ye shall be in thy power of the devil. And surely it shall be hard for you at the judgment bar. Faithfully exercise your stewardships according to the holy order of God, which I have revealed unto you. Accept willingly whatever may befall you, for the Lord have, uh, for I, the Lord, have all things in mine hands, and take your pleasure in nothing but according to the will of God. Speak only that which is acceptable before your God, and lust not after anything which I have not commanded. Then shall your reward be sure, and ye shall stand at the judgment bar without fear. Amen. Now, Elisha, my son, I shall soon leave to join my father Enoch, whose, cities, whose city I have sought all my days. But I shall leave with thee the keys which are necessary for thee to do the work which the Lord hath appointed thee. My mantle also shall fall upon thee, and the pure in heart will know thy voice and will follow thee. Farewell, my son. May the grace of God attend thee all the days, and may the peace of God be in thine heart. Amen.